All right, so here's instructions on how to build a 200 watt LED grow light. So there's five main parts that you need to buy to construct this. So starting off is the actual LED itself and the LED driver. So you can see below is the chip, which is the LED. So this contains all the little lights and uh, it needs 100 watts of power to run it. So that's what the LED driver is for. You connect the LED driver to the LED light. The next part is the heat sink and the fan. So LEDs generate a lot of heat and it needs to be dissipated. So this is achieved by using a heat sink. So heat sinks are made of aluminum and they work by having surface area. So you can buy these heat sinks with a fan built into them, which is very convenient. So you get a two in one product. So these fans run off 12 volts. Another important product you need is thermal paste. So this connects the LED, the back of it, to the heat sink to allow maximum thermal conductivity. Do not try building this light without thermal paste or your LEDs will be destroyed over time because they will not be able to dissipate the heat correctly. The 12 volt power supply is used to power the fans in the heat sink. So the 12 volt power supply is powered by 120 volts or 220 volts. So you just plug that into the wall. Now the re lens reflector and mounting bracket are not necessary for this build but I highly recommend it because the lens and the reflector reduce the field of view of the light so the light is more concentrated and the bracket makes it much easier to mount the LED the lens reflector mounting bracket and the heat sink to the frame so this is the circuit diagram so you can see everything is powered from the main power supply which will be 120 volts or 220 volts depending on your location as you can see coming from the mains power there's brown and black wires this is just shown for the diagram to show the picture more clearly it doesn't matter if you mix up a black or brown wire because they're both AC now if we look at the LED drivers, so there's two separate LED drivers, one for each LED light. So they're going to have a positive and negative output. So you want to make sure the positive output is connected to the positive input of the LED. So this is usually indicated by a red wire and also a plus on the connector. So on the LED there'll be a plus mark on where you want to connect the wire to. And then there'll be a minus mark for the black wire, which is the ground, okay? So you want to do that for both LED lights. Now for the 12 volt power supply, there's likely going to be a special connector which is used for something else for this that's not related to this project. So what you want to do is cut off the connector and there'll probably be two wires inside the power supply, a red and a black one. If you're not sure, use a multimeter to check which one is 12 volts positive and which one is 12 volts negative. Because if you mix it up, the fans will work in backwards and they won't be nearly as effective. So once you measure which side is 12 volt positive, you want to connect it to the red wire on the fan, which is the positive input of the fan. And then you want to connect the black wire to the ground which would be the negative output of the 12 volt power supply. So the wiring of everything should be fairly straightforward but I'll give you some tips on how you should assemble the LED light assembly in the heatsink. So as you can see in the picture you can see the lens, the bracket, the reflector, the LED and the heatsink. So what you want to do is have your heatsink first and then you want to apply about a pea sized amount of thermal paste to the heatsink and then you want to put on your LED light okay and you want to squish down the thermal paste as tight as possible so that way it spreads out all over the heatsink and the LED light so then on top of that is going to be the reflector so the reflector is just the back which helps reflect the light into the lens so then on top of the reflector goes the lens itself the glass lens and on top of that is the bracket so the bracket has four holes on it to screw, put screws through. And the heatsink also has four holes in the corner that screws go through. So it lines up perfectly. So you put the four screws through the bracket and through the heatsink and into the frame, which in this case is made out of wood. A few other things I wanted to mention is that you're going to need a soldering iron and some solder to connect 
the LED to the LED driver. There's n really no other way to do it without that. So you're going to need to buy one of those if you don't already have one. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Like you, There's lots of videos online on how to solder. Some other things you're going to need are going to be some screws. I mean, those are really cheap, so I didn't really bother mentioning them in the parts list. Uh, you're going to need some electrical tape, because you, when you're connecting the 120 volts mains power supply to your LED drivers and your 12 volt power supply, you want to make sure there's no bare wires, because you don't want to short. Uh, I also recommend using marettes, because those are really useful to connect wires together that w doesn't require solder. Uh, the frame can be made out of wood. I mean, that's pretty easy. You can use any material you want. I mean, it should be an insulative material, so that way you won't be shorting anything out. Also, when you construct your frame, be sure to allow lots of airflow to the fans. You don't want to block the fan airflow, because then it would be pointless and the fan wouldn't work nearly as well. You're also going to need a plug for your wall. So you can get those at like basically any hardware store for a few bucks and you just use that to connect the wall to the your LED or you could just cut a cord off some old pieces of stuff like I mean I have a big scrap pile and that's where I got mine uh, you're probably gonna need a few wires too I mean those are pretty easy to come by like you can get wires from pretty much anything and you're also gonna need a multimeter because you just want to make sure that you're not mixing up polarities because you don't want to blow up stuff that you paid money for it's definitely worth getting a multimeter I mean, they're pretty cheap, too.